Hey, hey, Gator Nation. Welcome back to the Respect Our Decision podcast. It's January the 25th. And as always, your boy Hirsch with me is Mike. What's going on? And the main man, Wes. What's good? What's good, Gator Nation? Wes is on delay tonight. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, delay. All right, guys. As always, man, we got another jam packed episode going on here for you tonight. So make sure y'all go out there and download us wherever you get your podcasts from, available on all platforms. And guys, tonight will also mark the debut of our individual YouTube show, Pod of the People. So make sure if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, Respect Our Decision, go ahead and go ahead and do that now. Jump on board. We'll be uploading that episode later this evening or in the morning, so it'll be there for you to watch as well. And as always, guys, if you'd like to support us as creators, please go forward and check on our Patreon, Respect Our Decision. We really appreciate all of y'all that support us. And as always, guys, we put every dollar we make back into this show. We're just trying to get better and better every week. And before we jump into it, we want to give a big shout out to our sponsor, All Star Roofing. All Star Roofing in Georgia. If you guys need a new roof or roof repair, gutters, gutter repair, or storm damage, been a lot of storms in the Atlanta area the last couple weeks, All Star Roofing in Georgia will service any of those needs for you guys. Use code RESPECT100. Save yourselves $500 off a brand new roof, man. Keep telling y'all that taxes are coming in. Don't wait on getting that roof fixed, man. Y'all get them holes in that roof. Y'all going to regret it. (laughs) All right, guys. (laughs) Let's jump into some recruiting news. And, guys, we're not going to talk so much about the Gators in a lot of ways right now. We want to talk about why Rivals has become a terrorist-funded organization. And why do they hate the Florida Gators so badly? Hirsch, what are you talking about? I'm in, I've been out of the loop this week. What's going on? Let me just tell you some things going on. Rivals released their final rankings of the season after the All-Star Games like they usually do every year. And let's just start off with the most glaring injustice Kelby Collins, you may remember Kelby Collins went out and won the MVP award for his team in the uh, All-American game. So what does that get you in the Rivals rankings? Well, it drops you 19 spots in the Rivals rankings. That's what it gets you. 19 spot drop after dominating practices and winning the MVP for his team. He's still currently 40th in the composite, but um, 19 spot drop. But it doesn't stop there. As you may have remembered from last week, uh, we talked about Eugene Wilson got bumped up on own three to a five-star prospect. Now, I'm not here to say necessarily that Eugene Wilson is a five-star prospect, but I find it very hard to argue he's not a top 100 prospect, given his film and his play and whatnot. Eugene Wilson is not even ranked in the rival's top 250. Not even ranked. Matter of fact, he's number 66 in the state of Florida, according to Rivals.com. What in the world? Does it stop there? Nah, nah. It doesn't stop there. But wait, there's more. But wait, yeah, there's more. We'll throw in, we'll throw in, when you buy into this now, we'll throw in one more ratings injustice. Roderick Kearney, also not ranked in the top 250 after being very dominant all-star practices in front of most evaluators. Uh, Number 46 in the state, 20 spots ahead of uh, Eugene Wilson. At least he has that going for him. This is a kid that many consider one of the top interior linemen in the entire country. Okay. Uh, Just another example, and this one I guess could be arguable. Jordan Castell, not ranked in the top 250 prospects. Number 48 in the state. Now, this could be all tributed up. I'm sure anybody hears us talking about this. Oh, we all are just Florida fans, sour grapes, blah, blah, blah. I just want consistency. I mean, this is a vast differential in, I mean, guys, what are you thinking about this? Does this, this, I mean, Mike, I know you've got to have some opinions. 
it's I thought it was bad before, before. I mean, it had taken a hit, you know, big hit. Um, it's just awful, you know. Uh, it, it, going back, you, to, like you were saying, the recruiting fiasco, extremely unprofessional. They were the only uh, site that actually, you know, announced it like they did. It definitely took a hit from us. Uh, you talking about Dijon? Yeah, Dijon. Sorry. And it's just like it's the these. The discrepancies are ESPN-like, and everyone knows how no one takes ESPN uh, seriously. So it's just Eugene Wilson alone, It's that's the worst one. It's just like how, how can you actually explain it with a straight face how awful it truly is? And Arch Manning, uh, it's – um, I guess camps aren't, you know, aren't required. He literally didn't go to any camps, didn't play in any All-Star games. Or uh, all American games, and it's everyone knows just living off his last name. He played against he in Bantamweight Pop Warner. So, and then you get a player who actually did play in all star games uh, in Alabama. I'm gonna say Alabama Mississippi game. Um, sorry if I'm in cracking on that, but we when you um, one of the major two all American games, you you are the defensive MVP. You have the audacity to drop them 19 spots. People drop them one or two, whatever it is, what it is. 19 spots. That's a uh, it's it's a war crime. It's utterly war crime. So honestly, um, I'm I may be dialing up NATO. <laughs> Real quick, as you mentioned Arch Manning, and I want to get Wes's opinion on this, obviously as well. You you brought up Arch Manning. Arch Manning stayed number one in rivals final rankings. Uh, on three, at least had the decency to drop him two old spots. Oh, I noticed that. I noticed that. <laughs> He's still a five star plus, whatever you want to call that. But Arch Manning retained the number one spot. He never lost it all season. And this was Rivals Adam Gorney's take on why Arch Manning remained the number one prospect. Arch Manning did not do any Rivals camps. He did not compete at the Elite 11. He played in no national seven-on-seven tournaments, and he declined to play in the postseason All-Star games. That is not ideal, but it still does not take away from the fact that the Texas signee has a tremendous ability, outstanding upside, and a pedigree that cannot and has not been ignored. Others pushed, but Manning stayed number one. What? Yeah, pedigree is just last name. Uh, and what? I'll, I'll pass it to Wes in a second. It's just he, he's his last name. All right, that's great. I know kudos. He may be decent. If you put him at 150, where he probably should be, approximately, no one's going to argue with it. This is but a kid that how can his, prove it? This is a kid in his last high school game, which you know, was in the play was in the playoffs, went eight for twenty-one with ninety-six yards and two interceptions and a lost fumble. And he and he plays in Bantamweight. <laughs> I'm like it's pathetic. He didn't even pick six. <laughs> it's pathetic. I'm not even kidding. Like, hey, all right, you go to you go you go to a good high school. You know, you know, I get it for like, academia. Cool. Then go to some camps. If you're not scared, like, what is it? I, I'm scared. I want to use another term, but, you know, I know there may be kids watching. But he, he's, he's – why not? If he, I want kids, kids who aren't scared of competition. <laughs> I, and this kid's a child. That's why he plays a band and football. Probably had to do weigh-ins before the games. So I saw some of the kids he played against. They're 90, 95 pounds. We blow scouts. Wes, give us give us your opinion on the whole rivals <laughs> fiasco here. I mean, I, I know we get, <laughs> a lot of Gator fans had a problem with O three where they were reporting sometimes about uh, some just certain things in the recruiting ranks, but rivals uh, right now is just the worst. I mean, it's, it's a reason why a lot of people who follow recruiting go to two four seven composite, which is of everybody with his on three rivals. ESPN 247's own and then you do that into your own uh composite because some of these recruits we, we like Mike alluded to by ESPN we know how awful they were I mean there's no way it, it's crazy we're, we're not we're not a part of course we were recruiting podcasts so we're not saying recruiting rankings don't matter because it, it does matter but there are a lot of biases and, and and behind the scenes things that people don't know about uh that do happen uh, so that's why we kind of look focus on the 
uh, our last couple of pods about our class average and Billy's class average as far as uh, the 91 plus or 92. It, I, I could be off by a few percentage points as far as our class ranking in the overall top to bottom because you have to use the composite because the one site might have this kid over here ranked here uh, as we see in Eugene Wilson. Then he's the number <laughs> – He's the top 50 player in, in, in the whole country here. And then over in Rivals, he's he's uh, not even in the top 50 in the, in the, in the state. That's stupid. Um, so uh, if you want to follow recruiting accurately uh, and, and try to get some kind of gauge on it, because it, it, it fluctuates from whoever is doing where and where that person probably went to school and how man, money might have been passed away, just do a composite. I think On3 has a composite as well. So I would use either on three composite or two four seven composite. That way you get up everybody's uh, ranking uh, average. So uh, it, it's it's just crazy, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah, I mean now let's you know Jakeem Jackson went to 120 overall. Uh, Sharif Denson went to like 114 above Jakeem, which is kind of funny. But hey, good to see. Him. I mean, so it wasn't all bad news, but. Something like what you see right there with Kelby is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Mike, you got one more thing you want to add before we, we – Yeah, I mean, besides the fact – I'm going to make sure I say this. Just the fun rivals. You know, we you saw what Gator Nation did to on three, and it's, there's no coincidence. So the, the fun to on three, that worked. The fun rivals. And honestly, if they leave the whole recruiting area – hey. I'm I'm ecstatic. There's a reason why people have left them in droves. Not not subscribers, but actual employees. They're just not taken seriously. They literally not. It's just like all right, all right cool. They're a second rate recruiting uh, site. So that, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not. But no, the main thing with with a five star, they're supposed to be ready day one. If you're not ready day one, you're gonna get dropped. It doesn't mean you can't be a great player. It just means you're not ready day one. Let alone him being a five star, someone prospect in the country. If you're the number one prospect in the country, you're expected to be ready to start day one. Am I wrong? Nope. It is widely known, and he will be sitting that he needs to sit. Why is he sitting? Because he played in fear of competition. He is not ready. So what what everyone knows this. No one's going to disagree with you, yet that, by definition, he, he, he should not be a five-star. Yet he he a number one in the country because his last name is Manning. So I want to know how much the family paid, off, paid him off. That's what I want to know. Because no, there's no other sons. That's the last one. How much was paid? <laughs> Maybe Eli's daughter's going to play. No, I think, I'll tell you what. We, we may have tried to fund rivals. I think the Mannings are funding rivals. But I mean, even even being number three and on three, and it's it's just nobody wants to be wrong. So if he pans out, they're like, "Yeah, we had him number one in our." That, that's what it's about. But a five, five star, star plus is, recruit. A five star is ready. Is a day one contributor. By definition, if you're well, not, some would say some some have said in the past it's 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 about NFL potential. Oh, first round? NFL potential. NFL, NFL potential. First, and I know first round. That's why it's what 32, 33 on the. Uh, yeah, thirty-two. But that's what it's based on. Let, let's, you know, we had this conversation very early on, episode two, I believe it was, when we were still after Cormani and Cormani dropped after a camp. What's the purposes of the camps? Nothing good comes from it at all, except possibility of injury. I mean, and if you're, I guess, if you're a borderline. And you just want that push because, you know, you want your NIL stock to go up. You can, you can go to other teams and say, well, this is what the going rate is for a five-star, you know, name your position. It's the only thing I can understand. But anyway, if you haven't already, jump on the bandwagon, the fun rivals. Get them out of here. <laughs> Send them to the moon. Wes isn't in unison. That's a shame. Yeah. My bad. Undertaker. Big hoss. All right, guys. We're going to talk a little Gator recruiting for real quick. Uh, we had some visitors this weekend. Not a whole lot out of that. No, I mean, it's just it's getting to be that time where 24 kids and 25 kids are going to trickulate in here and there, and they're going to stop by on the weekends. 
But this weekend, we have our very first junior day of, of this cycle, uh, and we got some good names coming in this weekend. Headlined by 2024 commitment DJ Lagway coming on in, and he's bringing some friends with him. Going to do a little recruiting. And this is what you want to see out of your out of your headliner in your class. You want to see him coming in, making the trips from you know over from Texas, doing a little recruiting, and he's bringing a, a real good friend of his with him in 2024 receiver Draylon Miller, who's a six two receiver, like I said, out of Texas. He's number sixty two overall in the composite currently for 2024. Good good friend with DJ. And as I know of right now, Ohio State's not recruiting him, so that's a plus. <laughs> you always got to check. So you, know? a chance. <laughs> you always got to check on those receivers to make sure it doesn't say offered by Heartline out there somewhere, or else you just kind of be like, well, it was nice trying. Another name coming this weekend that Gator fans are very familiar with, linebacker Adarius Hayes, four-star. That's been many times to Gainesville. And, guys, I got to pose a question to you. If, if this kid doesn't go ahead and commit this weekend, after all these trips, are we sliding their Darius Hayes into the Derek LeBlanc category of frequent flyer, but uh, just coming for the snacks? Personally, um, I may give him like a – he's going to have a hard stop. As I like to say at work, like when I'm talking to somebody uh, too long on the phone, he's not – I'm giving him a, a, a recruit um, commit or else date. Like, I'm sorry. Like, dude, you, you know the campus. You know the staff. You know the defensive scheme. Like, we're not going to – like you said, we're, we're not – we're done feeding you. Yeah, you're I mean, on board, you're not. Yeah. So, hey, you're not good – you're not good enough where we can't move on. Or if if – at least with John Walker, Coach Spencer, or, and, and gang, they need to learn one thing. Don't let this shit drag on. All right? You have the upper hand here. I don't care what people say. It's still a University of Florida. I know we're not, you know, a you know, top, you know, uh, tier one program right now. But you still you saw tier two with the potential for a top five class. There's plenty of other talents, but, um, comparable at least. To Darius Hayes, do I want him? Yes. Is he a must-have? Absolutely not. Okay. So get put a, a hard commit date on there, or hey, you know, I wish you the best, but you're not for us. Wes, you're the you're the 2024 recruiting man. What do you think about? Is it is it time to shut this down? I agree with Mike too that it needs to be shut down. I don't ag agree with him about. Uh, the type of kid this is. I mean, he's the number 61 player in the country, uh, number seven edge, uh, 12th uh, rated player in Florida. We got to start winning Florida. Uh, you got a kid on it this, this, this many times. I don't want to be a, a – I can even go back to Tim Smith. Uh, I know we talk about LeBlanc a lot, but this reminds me of a Tim Smith as well where the kid has been on campus that many times. This kid is a must-get. Um, we need – top guys from the state of Florida. And he's the type of guy that can move up in the rankings because he's that good. Um, uh, Mike says he can be replaced. I disagree with that. Um, as far as the type of guy that can be replaced, we saw what happened last year when when uh, we thought we could get the, kid, the two kids from out of uh, uh, Alabama, Rousseau and, uh, and Smith. Now, we, we, we got to start getting these guys in from our backyard in the state of Florida, in that, uh, what, 50-mile radius? I think it was 50 miles, 50, 60-mile radius. We got to start locking that down. And and he is that talented. If you got a top 60 kid, uh, there's not a lot of those floating around in on, on our team right now. So, yeah, he is a must-get. Yes, Mike. All right. So, Yes, he's from the state of Florida. Is it ideal to get kids within a state? Yes. Can you win with like in the, if a kid that's in Texas or Georgia? Absolutely. It's, I mean, it's honestly for the most part, it's irrelevant where they come from as long as they're a football player, um, especially from you know uh, big time football states. Now, if you want to stay in Florida, you say he's a must get. Well, 
You, I have kids that are high, higher than them. We have just in Florida, you got a uh, Wolf McGee, Wolf fourth out of Monty Palmetto, and then you have another one, Booker Pickett Jr. out of Warren, out of from, in Tampa, Florida. He's he ranked even higher. So and oh, yeah, and then you got T.J. Capers, Edge once again, Columbus and Miami. That's three kids right there in the state of Florida. T.J. Capers is not trending towards us. So then you. No, 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 I say trending. No, I, you say he's a must get because no kids in Florida. I just named three, let alone other kids. So he, why is he must get? He's not the, he's, if he was but, the more part of the country, that's different. He's not. Let me ask you a question. Must get because I can. We can X Capers out. So that's not even an okay. option. It's two more. So, it's, you, but you have a relationship with this kid. You can't. You got to stop losing these battles, as you always say. Perception is a thing. You can't have a kid come on your campus over and over and over again and not commit. This perception matters. You got to shut right. it down. And he's a must get kid. All right. So was uh, John Walker must get? Yes, and they lost. Okay. Well, guess what? We lost out on the backup plan with uh, the Xavier kid to South Carolina because we were waiting on John Walker because we thought he was in a, he was a solid commit. Then we couldn't get, couldn't pay him because because we pussyfooted around and we didn't we didn't get it done. So put it. Listen, if the kid wants Florida, he'll commit to Florida. Okay. He knows he knows the staff. That's so at what point do you, you you're, just you're, say, listen, if you want to come to my point. There, you, you have to you have to read the room, okay? You can't let the kid, the kid. We're not uh, we're not dis we're not we're not disagreeing One second. There. You can't let the kid dictate terms of recruiting. We're not disagreeing oh, there. Oh, That's why it's a must get. Wait, are you let me finish. You can't let the kids dictate it. He's not a must. Listen, what I like him is he a key recruit? Absolutely. He's not a must get. He's not going to make or break the class. That's a must get. TJ Lagway is a must get. So nobody else is a must get right now. No, there's plenty of other kids. However, he's not. There's, there's, couple, there's plenty of other kids. Look at, I mean, from, from a perception standpoint, and where are we at perception. in perception. Which one is it? Perception but, or must get? It's two a, think, three other kids in state. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I ranked. You, hey, asked, you let me. You let me. You asked me to let you finish. Let me finish. From a perception standpoint, from all the bad news we've had, from the Tim Smiths, from the John, you brought up John Walkers, from the LeBlancs. From all these kids that keep coming on campus and not committing, we need positive news. This kid has been here last week. He's coming again Saturday. He's a must-get from the perception, from recruiting. He's a top 60 kid. He's not like he's a four-star, three-star type. He's, he's a four-star, borderline five-star kid. He is a talented kid that you need on your roster from a percent, from a, uh, a perception standpoint and a recruiting standpoint because he's talented. Perception for, who? perception for who? The fan base or the national media? Both. Both right now. Okay, Both. national media is irrelevant because if they drop them, no one's going to hear about it. Okay, that's one. Okay, we're talking about right media, now. We're well, talking about right now. Hold on. From the fan base, the national media is not going to even pick this story up. Okay, they pick up the ma major stories like Rashada and they and they do the half ass truth. Okay, and after the Gator, uh, Gator media, they can let it slip out. Hey, he's not going to commit, or it, it, it can come out. Hey, he's going to have a set date. Staff moves on. This happens all the time in recruiting. Okay. And it, but bottom line, you can agree or disagree. That's fine. But you said it's a must get when I just three other kids in the state. That's your argument. Then you say perception. Which one is it? Okay, perception. Oh, we went, we missed on them. No, we we moved on. That happens every cycle. You hey, you know what? We moved on from the kid. Why? Could be great. Hey, we moved on from the kid from uh, Nixon, I think, from UCF because it just wasn't a good fit. Well, guess what? Are you gonna commit or are you not gonna commit? You said Tim Smith. You can Roy rise. Not going to change the fact that Tim Smith and Sean Walker committed were on campus. They lived on campus. Guess who never got them? Period. So at what point do you put you strong arm them? Because we we make, you don't make the same mistakes twice. This is the definition of insanity. Same same things. You want different result. You're saying okay. stuff that we we don't we don't disagree there that you got to make the kid commit that you that that point that you keep bringing up we agree on that. So that's irrelevant. All right, let me let me pop my sense in this as I screw up our screen here because um, yeah. All right, I, I agree kind of with both of you, but at the end of the day, Mike, <laughs> um, you, I agree with what you're saying about it's time to make some of these kids shut things down. You can't just let these kids keep coming in, keep coming in, keep coming in, getting the warm and fuzzies. Oh, man, I really love what I'm hearing. You've heard all you need to hear. You know what we're doing. 
Now, if your whole thing as a as a recruit is, well, I just want to see how how they're trending this year because last year I didn't like some of the things I saw at the end of the season. Well, then maybe you need to do your thing and we go do our thing. And he and guess what? And I'm not saying, hey, you can take your hey, cool, but you're not gonna keep coming on campus. No, absolutely not. That's this all I'm saying. You this isn't a buffet. Hey, what? Let's re we'll talk, let's reconvene. No, nobody disagrees with you there. On that point, absolutely. I, I get what y'all are both arguing as far yeah. as if it's a must get or not. I, I tend to lean with if it is kind of a must get if you've you've had this kid in your pocket, you need to, but you've got to close it out. You have to, as a coaching staff, we've said this so many times. It's time to drop some balls and say, look, we want you on this team. You've been here a dozen times, however many times it is. Miles Graham can only text you and call you so many times and ask you to join on, you know, it's time to, I'm sorry, shit or get off the pot. <laughs> no, Period. That's, that's, that's I like all. that. That's I'm going to steal that. There's a, I want to say 10, 12, 10, about eight to 10 kids above them from Texas or Alabama or Florida. Just let's not go back to California. I'm about done with that. I'm, you know, I, I'm here with you. Um, one other recruit that's coming, speaking of more outside linebacker help, uh, Jaqueline uh, Birdsong from Georgia, 6'2", outside linebacker. He's number 152 in the composite. Uh, just another big-name kid coming in this weekend. And there will be more announced throughout the week. Obviously, we're recording this on Wednesday. Visits will probably, you know, guys, kids will start rolling in Saturday morning or such. So more names will be announced. We'll tweet some of those out as we hear them. Uh, should be a pretty fun weekend in Gainesville, but once again, we need to see some results. I'm not saying we need to get this class filled by summertime, but if you got a kid, once again, like Hayes, that's been here half a dozen times in the last six months, it's time to, you know, all right, guys, let's close this one down. We do need a victory right now. I understand what Mike's saying about the, you know, you don't, not for the national media, but the fan base could sure use a victory just to, come off the ledge a little bit right about now it, it'd so, be nice but i'm not gonna if i'm a coach you don't no you don't do it for the fans you, i understand you, that you, you, your job is win games it's not to appease a fan base because if, if you recruit correctly you will win games and, not, but like, oh, as I we agree on the, as a coach he does need to at some point stand his ground and say look here young man what are, what what game, why are we what, why are we playing this game absolutely you like us, we like you. Let's let's quit this courting each other and, and just you know do the dance. All right. So, you know, hopefully next weekend we're talking about some good news coming out of this weekend and we'll have some reports on what kids had to say and whatnot like that. And if DJ was able to maybe wrangle us one in that we are kind of hoping we get, I'd love to get us get that receiver. We need some big time receivers this class to follow up. KC, work your magic. The goat. All right, guys. That's all for recruiting this week. But the staff did a lot of recruiting in this this last 48 hours or so. So we're gonna talk about that because it's Portal Mania time. Guys, Portal Mania as always is brought to you by our partners, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the daily fantasy where you are just picking against the spread, guys. Playoff weekend. Uh, you know, conference championship games would be a good time to jump on board and play some picks. You know, a, a sample pick may be is Patrick Mahomes going to uh, throw for 250 yards or more or 250, you know, less. He's got that bum ankle. He may not be feeling it this week. Might have to pick the under on that. I know Mike wants him to pick the – Mike Mike probably wants the under on that. He's not a big Mahomes fan. But if whoa. you use our <laughs> – Whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen <laughs> – don't attack my next brethren like that. Right. Oh, Lord. Simmer As down. always, guys, if you use our code RESPECT100, Prize Picks is going to match your first donation up to $100. So go out there, conference championship weekend, man. Drop some cash on these games. Win you some money, man. All right, guys. As we mentioned, the Gators, the Gators definitely did a little portal recruiting this last weekend and added three new names to the uh, roster for next season. 
Mike, you want to run these names down? Yeah, uh, mo uh, most recent – or not, actually, take that back. Um, yeah, I got Manny Nunnery. It's going to be a weak side linebacker out of uh, University of Houston. And uh, per David Rosenberg from uh, Gators Wire, he made significant strides in 2022 playing in nine games for the Cougars, finishing the year with a 73.2 defensive grade according to Pro Football Focus. Now um, our linebacker room actually looks uh, – I'm, I'm not petrified. We've got some bodies. Pardon? Got some bodies, if nothing else. Some bodies, and we have protection against possible transfers, and that's the biggest one for me. And and our special team should be much improved, I've got a feeling. Well, if we, if we lose a certain uh, body there, um, but he's a – Guy that's on the couch? It, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he eating the ho-hos right now. But, uh, yeah, got – now currently consists of Terrell Hodge, uh, Mitchell out of Ohio State, Deuce Spurlock out of Michigan. And this is also to go along, go along with the incumbents, uh, Derek Wingo and uh, sophomore, uh, sorry, Jamar James and uh, Scooby Williams. And also uh, doesn't uh, discount uh, true freshman Jane Robinson. So and, uh, once again, I want to reiterate, he's expected to play well. He's an extremely athletic uh, individual out of high school. 24-7 uh, composite ranked him at 94 uh, for outside linebackers in the class of 2019. He was the 1,326 uh, overall prospect and a 177th player out of the state of Texas. So, and uh, last season, he actually had a 40, definitely a respectable season. Uh, 46 tackles, three tackles for a loss, and a sack in 2022. And like I was saying, and uh, big-time special teams player, has, and Hurst alluded to as well, Two and uh, two block punts and uh, three block kicks are in the, also the 2021 season. So you know you don't necessarily have to be a starter to you know make a big impact. You know it's it, one it's the depth alone. He he has a, a significant playing time. So he you know he's not going to get you know the bright lights aren't going to you know scare him. But the special team impact alone, you know, everyone knows what a block kick can do. Everyone, that's what Urban Meyer, that's what some of his MO, special teams. So, I mean, what do you guys think about uh, Matt? Wes? Yeah, I mean, Mike always says Bateman got us for a reason. Uh, the one thing I can say about Bateman and his uh, on the field production, we already knew where Venture Miller was, but we saw Bernie improve. Uh, so, you get a talented guy like that in. Uh, and hopefully Bateman can get him to uh, reach his potential, whatever that potential may be. Uh, Mike alluded to the kid being athletic, uh, blocking a couple punts and uh, uh, just being flying around. So maybe if you can hone in on what and teach him the right fundamentals of the playing the position correctly, you might have some uh, something special on your hands. So uh, not big on Bateman, the recruiter, but I'm big on, big on uh, banking on Bateman, the, the teacher. So uh, hopefully this kid can turn out to be a, a, a something that uh, we look at further down the road as something that we can uh, uh, be, be proud of. He has a tremendous coverage grade as well. Uh, last Literal year. His, slot. Yeah, his PFF grade on coverage was like top 30 or 40 in the country for linebackers. So very good coverage linebacker. I, I actually thought before I saw what his size is now, he may even get some burn at safety because I saw he was listed at one point at 205, but it looks like he's put on a little more weight now. So, yeah, he probably will stick to that weak outside linebacker spot. All right. Now, uh, another one we got here is going to be a Keonta Goodwin. And he actually uh, visited this past weekend. And uh, actually, today was it was made official. There was some smoke out there. It was made official. He, uh, he will be joining the Florida Gators. His mentor, Adrian Weber, actually made a short comment. This is a per Blake Alderman about his how the visit went. It's a quote: "The coaches were incredible, and the staff was incredible. Incredible, Mr. Weber told twenty four seven. What they're doing out there is definitely moving in the right direction. Facility is top notch, hundred percent top notch. The plan that they have for winning is definitely in line with what we are looking for with our kids. Kianta definitely enjoyed the visit. We will be talking about it and, and convening real soon, and we will see what we will do." So obviously what he did, committed to the Gators. We have a giant offensive tackle, uh, figuratively and literally, and I'm ecstatic. Guys? I love it. Um, obviously the weight on the kid is the concern. 
I'm sure that that was discussed with the coaching staff on his visit. Um, if you're going to come here, you're going to be serious. I know Billy is really big on laying out a plan for these kids and telling him, telling them his expectations that he's going to have. Um, I'm sure he was probably like, hey, if you want to know, go ask Sean, you know, uh, Desmond Watson, you know, what the plan is there. I could see the kid lining up at right tackle game one next year. I, I think Barber slides to left. Um, yeah, man. Top four, you know, top 40 offensive tackles. Whether he lives up to the hype or not, they don't grow on trees. Six, eight, three, forty. You don't find that every day, buddy. Get him no. out there, teach him some technique. I'm all for it. And like we said, Kentucky wanted him or had him. So it's Kentucky uh, didn't have bad offensive lines. Yeah. Wes? Yeah, I mean, to, to get a little bit more into uh the kid was a former five star last year and one of the recruiting ranks. I mean, he he was he's a top uh one of the heavily recruited guys coming out of high school last year. And I believe, uh, as we spoke, he played more than four games last year. So he has three years left. So not only are you getting a guy that uh, you may be able to use right now, but into the foreseeable future. Uh, so you you plug this in like you got a guy in the 2021 recruiting class. Uh, so I love that part about him, that the years he have remaining left to play. So uh, got two offensive line coaches, Sale. Uh, we've been on him uh, about uh, his salary. Well, I've been on him uh, about his salary and, and, and the fact that he needs to step up. So this is a big get for uh, everything they've done in the portal. I'm, I'm, I, as far as getting offensive linemen, I'm, I'm okay with. Uh, so I'm, I'm good there. I, I love this kid. Where do you guys see they start an offensive line? Uh, Barber, Mazuka, Kingsley. Yeah. Um. I'm torn on if it's going to be Leonard or Farmer at that right guard position right now. I think that's going to be a camp battle. And then ultimately, um, yeah, good win on that right tackle. What? I only see right now is Barber. I don't care. I, I need everybody to be fighting for positions. I don't care. Maybe I, I don't, I don't foresee anything right now. Uh, and what I mean by that, and sorry not to kind of directly answer your question, we have a lot of young guys and a lot of guys coming from other schools. So I just see a big competition. I can't tell you I'm not going to make up some kind of lie. Only guy I'm, I'm, I'm trusting right now is Barber. And they, that goes for our returning center. You know how I feel about uh, Kingsley. I only see Barber. And, and everybody else is up for grabs. I don't think Kingsley's losing uh, you, his you're spot. Not put, you're not a pencil in Mazuka. Oh, yeah, yeah. My bad. I forgot. The kid from Baylor. My bad. Mazuka. Yeah. Mazuka is day one. Uh, you you, you I'm, giving I'm, that, you're, that you're, check you're, back? Somebody? You're the offensive line guy. My bad. Uh, I, good good point. Of, yeah, him there. Yeah. I forgot. My guy from Baylor. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah he's left so. guard day one. That that one you can pencil in better than yeah, anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Those two. I'm hoping some I, – I, I kind of feel like – I guess I can put Kingsley in there, but I'm hoping, I'm praying no, that somebody – I think you might as well because they ain't replacing. I don't think they're going to – I know, I know, I know. How I'm looking at it right now, I'm going to put Barber at the left tackle, uh, Mazuka at the uh, left guard, obviously. Uh, right tackle, I'm going to put in, a, a, you know, our uh, good old uh, uh, good one. Now, this is what where it can get goofy. Right now, I'm going to put in, you know, put the incumbents, I'll put in – in for uh, the veterans, I'll put Kingsley at center, Leonard at right guard. Now, sure. hypothetically, now this is where if some people step up in spring, some jobs can, can happen. I need the countdown county king himself, Richie Leonard, to do his thing, make the move to center. He's a center guard coming in from high school, and you and I get either Farmer or Kearney to step up. And Don't forget about George as well. Oh, I'm going. See, I'm. I'm. Or, I take that back. Or George, who can. So I, I've actually talked to a couple Bama fans. I think this. He's a constant right tackle, better at guard. I Mike, think this buddy. helps us a lot with Kearney not having to rush Kearney, which Absolutely. is a great thing. So, so I Mike, take that back. I'm penciling in uh, George. I want George at right guard, Leonard at center. It's gonna. I don't know. That. So you see Leonard taking uh, second team snaps in uh, spring. Absolutely. Slaughter's never a sea field. Gotcha. At, uh, or or uh, depending on how Harris is. But Slaughter's not going to see the field. He may be listening. He's not going to see the field. He, he won't play at University of Florida. 
He may do Guys, I, I hate to overrun you right here, but I've got a little bit of breaking news about a visitor coming in this weekend. Talk to and me. I just wanted to add while we just talked about, you know, names will be added to the list. Um, per Blake Alderman at 24-7, the number one running back in the country. Um, Jarrett Gibson will be in Gainesville this weekend. Let's go. Let's go. Big. <laughs> you can stop the podcast anytime. For yeah. that. <laughs> and, and for those who don't know, he was committed before to Mullen staff. And he is a Gainesville native. Yes. So well, just some FYI for that. On that. Y'all know I know him, I love uh, the 24 class. He's Knox, Knox is an analyst. <laughs> Knox yeah. took a job in uh, Mississippi State this weekend. I saw oh, he's I, back home. Hey, that's the homie. Hey, uh, but but no. now, hey, but that's a good transition. We're talking about running backs. Mike, hit us with the next transfer. Yeah, so we got uh, got to be uh, Cameron Carroll from Tulane. Going to be RB3. The Flowood Mississippi native. He actually suffered a uh, 2020, 2022 season opening uh, leg injury to cause him to miss the remainder of the campaign. You saw, I'm sure you saw a couple of troll jobs somewhere on a social media platforms. Oh, three to 10 for three yards. I'm like, listen, rookie move. You want to do the whole stat line, his whole career stat line. Because when you look at it, it's actually quite impressive. Let him, uh, and, and to have him as an RB3. Um, I'll just, um, his best season, just to touch on it, is going to be uh, in the 2020 year when he accounted for 741 yards on 122 carries and 12 touchdowns, all while averaging 6.1 yards per carry. So, um, yep. I want to jump. I'm I'm tremendously excited about this. Hirsch, why are you excited about a number three running back? I, I, lo- I like this kid. I love his attitude. I've, I've paid attention to him on social medias and whatnot. He posted some pictures of himself today. The kid is jacked. Now, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything the kid is jacked. Obviously, Renzo Lingard was jacked. Uh, but as Mike alluded to, the kid put up tremendous numbers before he was, in, you know, in the season before, when he before he got injured last year. So... I think for this kid, knowing he only had one year left of eligibility, to come in here and to be willing to take snaps as the number three back shows a tremendous team attitude. Absolutely. So, I'm I'm all for kids like that. Bring them by the bu- by the busload. And in 2021, he had seven, 17 catches. So, I mean, you're looking at 2021 had a 4.6 yard. Uh, yards per carry, 2020, 6.1. 2019, 5.1. So, I mean – Yes, and yes. I love this uh, an experience. I didn't think we would get somebody this experience. No. You know, you know, you guys think I thought. You know, you guys knew I was saying maybe it would be like a, a red shirt freshman type guy, red shirt sophomore type guy that we get in. Uh, but the reason why I love this even more because it keeps. Hopefully, if some if some true freshman or some other athlete doesn't supplant him, we can still have Trevor Etienne returning kickoff returns because you have another back that's seasoned uh that has experience because we saw the how special teams kick return changed once etn started returning kicks it's it's just a great pickup overall like you said i mean to get a kid this experience to come in now it does put an emphasis on you gotta get two backs this it, this recruiting it, it cycle. does but i think mean, um i'll leave it at this it's gonna benefit web the most absolutely absolutely one more year to kind of completely heal that knee injury he had, um, learned a system, learned behind some really good running backs. I mean, there's no credit to staff on this one. That's a win-win situation for all parties. Great pickup. All right. Now, uh, moving over, you know, we obviously spoke on transfers. Let's, you know, we've, with the, you know, transfer market dying down or at least, you know, uh, this uh, cycle of it and the next one will come up after spring. Uh, let's Graham Hall uh, recently wrote an article. I encur- highly encourage everyone to check it out on 24 seven for a full on transfer breakdown. We're just going to you know touch on it and add our two cents to it, but uh, just, you know, let's go to grade um, the little brief overview on the transfer halls th- thus far for the Florida Gators. Now we're going to start out with a defensive tackle, Caleb Banks, six, seven, 300 pounds, three years of eligibility left. Running back Cameron Carroll, when you know we spoke on six feet, two hundred twenty pounds, one year of eligibility left. Offensive lineman Damian George, six six, three hundred thirty three pounds, three years of eligibility left. 
Tell me if you're seeing a theme. Deep defensive tackle, Cameron Jackson, 6'6", 340 pounds, two years of eligibility left. Offensive guard, Micah Mazuka, 6'5", 331 pounds, two years of eligibility left. QB Graham Mertz, 6'4", 185, two years of eligibility left. Linebacker Terahata Mitchell, 6'2", 239, one year of eligibility left. Linebacker Manny Nunnery, 6'2", 225, two years of eligibility left. Linebacker Deuce Spurlock, 6'1", 231, four years of eligibility left. Off And last but certainly not least, the aforementioned offensive tackle, Keonta Goodwin, 6'8", 340-ish <laughs> pounds with three um, with uh, three years of eligibility left. Obviously, it was the common theme there, multiple years of eligibility left and massive players. Yep. Coming, yes. from, coming from big-time programs. And, you know, obviously this is not the ideal in terms of building a program. You know, we bash FSU on this. But we, I don't see this, and um, I'm going to kick it to you guys and your thoughts, uh, this being a year-over-year -year, uh, plan. You know, his first cycle, he kind of punted it, as I'm sure you, we all know. And uh, with kicking, you know, restarting it. And then this past cycle, we took a very small class, about 20 or so kids. So, you know, you got to got to fill holes. And we're getting kids where, you know, we're, we're, we're not the, we're plugging holes and we're letting the young guys develop. Something that like we were talking about, you, he punted at year one. I think Billy really wanted to see what he had and who was going to buy in and who wasn't. Some people may say, well, he needed to have more of a sense of urgency. And I get that take. I do. But you don't get kids to buy into you by coming in and running them right out of town. Um, and remember, he came in late. After, yeah. After I mean, you, just, you have to learn. Like, he held a meeting with these kids. He, he was very straightforward with them. He did the same thing with the recruits. And we've talked about that, about how he asked for the videotape or whatever have you not. And you can take that as you will. But Billy wanted to see <laughs> who was buying into wanting to be a Florida Gator. We played a season, and like Mike said earlier, you know, we kind of, you know, we kind of punted this season. You may not want to hear that as a fan. You may say, well, you know, in this day and age, you don't have the time to punt a season. But if you want this thing built back right, this is a burn it down in Phoenix from the ashes kind of situation. You you burn it down and you rebuild it the right way. No, I do not believe that the transfer portal is a long-term solution, but what we're doing differently with a lot of these kids that some schools aren't is these kids have multiple years of eligibility to learn the system, buy in, and hone their craft, as opposed to coming in and being a one-year stopgap, and then they're out the door, and then you're bringing in 10, 15 new kids in the portal that have to learn the system all over again. You know, we're not playing for, you know, where FSU is trying to, play in this window where they have Travis we're not playing in that window we don't have that one generational player that we're like man we got to capitalize before he's gone this is a build to create a team and I really like the way Billy's doing it so far Wes yeah I agree uh, I don't think it's sustainable to to, to consistently do this way I, I think I heard saw some with Deion Sanders said the same thing or he's gonna get so many uh kids in the portal get so many recruiting and uh, and graduate transfers as well. I don't buy into that uh, transfer thing because you, you're getting so many different, as you saw, Georgia just got somebody from Mississippi state that ended up uh, being arrested the other day. You can't live off that. You're getting guys that you don't really know that you haven't taken the time to recruit uh, and, and get out there. And then they come in and be uh, plant bad seeds in your locker room. So no, it's not sustainable, but for, for what he's doing this year and, and, and like Mike said, I don't, I don't know if <laughs> Clinton is the right word, but um, I get what he's saying as far as uh, getting the right guys in and seeing, I mean, well, coming here and seeing who would want to be a true Gator, like Hirsch just said, um, who is going to be going in the offseason and filling some holes, especially on the offensive and defensive line and that linebacker. Those are the places that we were hurting at uh, for years now. It's not just a, since Billy's come here. We've been hurting that linebacker, um, D-line, uh, especially nose tackle. Uh, Mike and uh, offensive line, we've been hurting there for a while. So uh, he came in and, and got some guys with multiple. I think only two guys had one year. 
out of the 10 plus guys that we have. So yeah, it's uh, the guy with one year, it's going to be uh, running back at Cameron Carroll and RB3, Mitchell three. And we were kind of, our, our hand was pressed there. And I think this was done by design with uh, Tara hot and Mitchell um, kind of like a great, I would best I could describe him a great value. Uh, Ventral Miller knows what he is, but he, a former captain at, of a playoff a playoff team. You know, you, you can't put the experience like that on there, you know, and ha- help the guys out. He knows his role. Yep. Agreed. Yep. So, and then, I think another thing that gets lost in this, Grant Mertz has two years, like I said. So, worst case scenario, DJ Lagway needs a little more seasoning. Mertz leads us to eight wins, pr- proves to be more than capable, can actually complete a slant. Hey, we have him for another year. Because I know when I saw it, I was like, hey, he has two years. What's up with that uh, initially? And well, if he has, even if he has a, let's just say he comes in and surprises the world, I still don't believe he's going to put up a tape that's going to generate him going pro after this season. Like I, if, if he exceeds every expectation that anyone thinks, you know what I'm saying? He's still probably not going to have that season where they're like, oh, Graham Mertz snuck himself in to the first round, you know, this year. I just – it's I, I could see the absolute ceiling. He can maybe go to that mid-day t- two. And what if you're at day two as a quarterback, at that point you're on the radar. And then you would come back again. But, yeah, but then you've set yourself up for, you know what, one more year of good tape like that versus the three others that you put up. That shows progression. It shows growth. You are let, ready. Let me finish before I say this. I'm not saying he's Joe Burrow. Not saying he's next oh, year. Oh, God, please don't. Yeah, yeah. Do so let me preface this by what I'm saying. What what Mike just said and what Hurst just said as well is Joe Burrow's first year was mid, second, average. third round. Yeah, he was average. And then he had so I don't, I'm not saying his next year might be that, but his next year might be where we may be able to compete. Uh we have out the, the freshman class now will be sophomores. So you're looking at the receivers being more ready. Andy Jean, uh Eugene Wilson, uh Aiden Mazel. So those guys being more ready for him going into his second year. And he knows the system better uh, his second year. So not saying he will put up those godding numbers because that would never be seen again with 60 touchdowns or whatever that outrageous stuff Joe Burrow did. But that is the type of – I wouldn't mind him having that junior – or, uh, yeah, junior uh, Joe Burrow season. No. Definitely see where it's coming from. Good take. Now, and uh, we, um, for the Gators, we, uh, one of our um, folks in the transfer portal actually found a home, Ethan White. The little Hevesy product. Uh, he he transferred over to uh, the University of Southern California, joining his buddy Michael Tarquin. So Good for um, him, yeah. Hey, best of luck to him. I have a no, you know. I wish him no ill will. Um, Mama's it, fished out the Gulf. She wanted uh, to try the Pacific. For is a while. it? <laughs> um, <touché. laughs> um, is there is it a coincidence that they're both at that school together? I think not. I think. My best guess is it's a good neighborhood for Ethan. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh my God. I can't comment on that. Moving um, on. Moving no. on. Moving on. Moving <laughs> on. Moving um, on. No, I can't. Uh, no, bottom <laughs> line, it's, I think, you know, they're heavy see guys. And they didn't see eye to eye with the staff. I, I fully supported what uh, Tarquin did. I, I, I probably would have done something the same. Ethan White, um, I think it was time to, to move on. So best, best of luck to him. Best, absolutely. I, I'm oh, sure I, we won't ever see Caleb Williams yelling at either one of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, hey, hey uh, Hirsch, you want to uh, close it out with uh, some Florida news? Yeah, man, we had a little bit of bad news this week. I mean, you know, I think it also made the good win – pull a little bit more necessary um, and Absolutely. left the coaches with no hesitancy whatsoever about taking this young man. Uh, Cameron Waits this weekend, as reported by Graham, Hare, Graham Hall first, uh, t- significant injury, tore his Achilles tendon during a non-contact workout Friday in Gainesville. Uh, just doing an agility drill. You know, these things happen. Big kids moving. Just gave out on him. Um, rough injury, which it- deeply impacts the offensive line potential for next year. But that's why you go out and you get a Keonta Goodman at the last minute. And I mean, we talked about it earlier. 
when we were going over our potential offensive lines, we had plenty of bodies to talk about in those positions. So the staff pivoted right when they needed to. They made the move. They got the kid probably at least, the, you know, I mean, he'll obviously miss all of next season. I mean, I would, I would imagine on a kid, his frame get, and yes. So there has been, and I did want to t- talk very briefly on that. There has been guys come back three, four months. Do I foresee that happening? No. Is it possible? Yes. It absolutely could. But, you know, the good thing is now with the transfers that we have, it's not a rush. Yes. And I would imagine the kid, I I don't, I don't can get a medical red shirt, depending on where he's at when the season starts. And you just say, hey, young man, work hard. That could benefit him. Absolutely. Like, One more year. I hate to be selfish. That as long as he doesn't me. use it sitting around, and I don't think the staff will allow that to happen. Yeah. They've been really good about staying on these kids about their nutritional, you know, Sweet habits man. and workout habits. I think they'll stay on him. Just got to make sure he's up, moving, continuously working that thing, rehabbing. But hey, that's why we got this beautiful new facility with all the bells and whistles, you know, and you know, in the medical field. Um, Mike, you had something you wanted to add? Yeah, just uh, you know, like it, it kind of. I had him penciled in at at least competing for a tackle spot. Worst case, to be a, uh, one of the you know the backups. Uh, luckily, with Damian uh, George, uh, I I like him at right guard. However, you know, I think he can you know be. I don't. I gotta see how if, how good his footwork is. But even if you put you know pencil him in as like a backup right tackle and maybe I mean I'm worried about the left guard tackle backup spot I really am but I don't know if he can be a swing or you gotta put you maybe one of the uh, like Caden Jones if he if, you know as a worst case scenario but you know we'll see in spring yeah it's good to have guys with flexibility that you might be able to put out there in a in time of need let's let's knock on wood that we don't have to do that but it's a long season and you know it just all it takes is one guy rolling up on a leg and then you're there. So I could definitely see us when the portal window opens back up, adding probably one more offensive lineman now with weights down just to really take care of that situation and leave ourselves with no open holes. Even if it's like a red shirt freshman, anybody. Yeah. You know, Somebody I coming think, up. I think we need an extra body. I don't like, cause I didn't like, uh, I think Connor, David Connor is going to be gone. I don't think he's long for the University of Florida. So I think we need another tackle just you know, for depth purposes in general. Yeah. All right, boys. Guys, we're about to jump off of here. Um, is there anything you want to add? Mike, you want to add? Yeah, lastly, I'm going to say, like I, uh, Wes kind of touched on it, just kudos to the offensive line staff. They shit the bed. For high school recruiting this cycle, there's no ifs or but if ands or buts about it. I mean, I like the center they got, I like the guard they got. I needed a damn tackle. I got 1.5. Ta- I got 1.75 tackles because I don't count you know George as a full right tackle, even though he can play at a decent level. You count Caden uh, Jones? Hmm. You count Caden Jones? I'm, I need a blue chip. Okay. I, I went. On, I don't blue chip tackle. Okay. Period. So Understood. that being said, uh, yeah. I, I love I love the transfer hall. At the end of the, end of the day, you, you know they pivoted. They you know they attacked. They they got um, SEC uh, uh, SEC players with SEC uh, experience. So with multiple years of experience, you can't ask for much better than that. Absolutely not. I I wholeheartedly agree. I still like to see us grab a safety with some experience. Yeah. Um, maybe an edge guy with some experience. Oh, and you know, thanks for Wes for the friendly reminder. You know, just with all of these transfers, you know, Bateman's got us. He's got us. He's just got us, baby. I hope he don't have us a lot longer. Yeah, but hey, he's got us. Sayonara, Scott. Sayonara, Scott. And hey, remember, like we said, you know, it merch so good, baby. Oof. It merch so good. Oof. Come on, baby, make it merch so good. Good God, print the shirts. <laughs> all right, guys. I want to, before I throw it to uh, Wes, I want to remind y'all 
debuting either tonight or in the morning is going to be our first ever solo episode of Pod of the People, where we answer y'all's questions that y'all have asked us via Facebook or Twitter. Um, be on the lookout for that next weekend if you watch the show and you're like, man, I'd like to be part of that. Have my question read. Or I want these idiots to answer some question that I got and hear them argue about it. Throw it out there, man. We're going to pick the best ones we got. And then we're going to read through them as long as we didn't already cover them in the show. And, um, you know, just kick it around and, and come up with some answers. Tell your kids. Tell your friends. Be, be yeah, the man. One, be the but, one that incites the next riot with Wes and I. Yes. Be the one. Be the that one. might be, while we were just talking, that might be a thing. Whoever has the best question for me and might the debate. And yeah, the best the, uh, Mike, Mike West debate question. Yeah. And I'll host that stuff it'll, like it's it'll town get, hall. We'll, we'll clip it. Yeah. yeah. Um, But, guys. With that being said, make sure you go out there and subscribe to the YouTube channel and watch that episode. We appreciate the support. The YouTube subscribers are climbing. But, man, there's a lot of Gator Nation out there that still ain't subscribed. And I just got to ask, why? <laughs> I mean, why? You know, it, it's it's so easy. You just go on YouTube and search, respect our decision, and hit that little subscribe button, and you're done. Yep. You don't even have to log into YouTube ever again. Just help a brother out. Come on. <laughs> it's a fair. I ain't too proud to beg. I ain't too proud to beg. Oh my God. All right, Wes, take us home, baby. Yes, please sign off. Yeah. Um, appreciate you guys. Like Hirsch just said, those who are following us and listening to us right now on the podcast, on Apple or Spotify, wherever you get your podcast from, uh, we're about to go over and do our part of the people. So uh, you have to go to YouTube and listen to that. Um, but to all our veterans out there, uh, if if you know a veteran or you're a veteran yourself, uh, hit us up if you have any questions about disability benefits or anything like that, uh, and we'll get back to you and answer those questions. Uh, signing off now for right now, uh, but we're not gone because we're about to do the fan uh, part of the uh, part of the people questions. So thank you guys, supporters. Like Hirsch said, we need the likes, we need the uh, subscriptions. Uh, please give us that. Uh, thank you all to our Twitter, Facebook followers. We love you. Appreciate you. And go Gators. Go Gators. Go Gators, guys.